Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It's Tuesday, and it's time for our daily devotion. So I want to invite you to come and join me for our time together as we take a pause in the middle of this beautiful Tuesday, windy, hot Tuesday, as we take a moment to pause and just break up our day with some time with God. As you join, if you want to leave a quick comment and let me know that you are here, I would appreciate you doing that. I'm going to say good morning to folks as they join. Pretty sure I'm on the St. John's Facebook page. I better be. Otherwise, folks will be scurrying around looking for me. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Good morning to you. I'm going to guess your group probably met via Zoom today, did they? As many folks as you have out with uh, illness. Morning, Stacy. We're going to be reading out of Deuteronomy chapter 15. One of the first five books of the Bible, Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Morning, Shirley. Glad you're here. Four of you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, at least you guys could all space out and kind of relax in that room. I had a board of trustees meeting last night, as Stacy can attest to, because Gary was on Zoom. We were all on Zoom last night for that. Morning, Chris. Glad you're here. Hopefully Barbara's with you. Again, we're reading out of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verses 7 to 11. If you are one who watches this a little bit later, if you would uh, give us a like, um, a love, whatever you want to do, leave a comment, let us know that you're here, that would be great. Glad you're here, Barbara. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Good morning to you. Jack, glad you're here as well. All right, Deuteronomy 15, verses 7 to 11. And here is our prayer of illumination. O oh God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. Prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verses 7 to 11. If among you one of your brothers should become poor in any of your towns within your land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother, but you shall open your hand to him and lend him sufficient for his need, whatever it may be. Take care, lest there be an unworthy thought in your heart, and you say, The seventh year, the year of release, is near, and your eye look grudgingly on your poor brother, and you give him nothing, and he cry to the Lord against you, and you be guilty of sin. You shall give to him freely, 
and your heart shall not be grudging when you give to him, because for this the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake. For there will never cease to be poor in the land. Therefore I command you, you shall open wide your hand to your brother, to the needy, and to the poor in your land. Our devotion writer today is Jamie Gustafson, and Jamie is from Russia. And focus verse is Exodus 33, verse 14, which says, The Lord replied, My presence go with you, will go with you, and I will give you rest. And here is the devotion that Jamie writes. My friend and I decided to take regular walks through the Siberian village where we were living to pray for our neighbors and to ask for God's guidance in how best to show them love. One brisk fall morning, we prayed for opportunities to be God's hands and feet to our neighbors. The very next day, God began to answer our prayer and neighbors began to ask us for help. This had never happened before. An elderly neighbor needed gas for his stove. Another neighbor's well was broken, and she was home with her three kids. We were easily able to get water for her. One neighbor was in the hospital needed diapers for her baby. Another family's car broke down, so I offered to drive them in my car. Such situations continue to this day, and people are grateful and amazed that we will help them so readily and they are more open to hearing about Jesus when they experience these tangible acts of love. I am thankful for the way God has answered our prayers so that we are able to shine God's light. Serving others has been a joy rather than a burden because of God's perfect presence and provision. The thought for the day is if I ask, God will show me opportunities or give me opportunities to show love to others. Um, one of the things that's really difficult about mission work at the church is, is we want to define parameters, right? And, and make it um, uh, kind of a black and white circumstance and situation for folks. And so particularly for us at the church, um, we don't have a benevolence fund. Um, I prefer not to do that on your behalf simply because the church gets inundated with requests from people who are simply using your resources for their own need in that moment, um, and which will probably never engage them in any other way, other than maybe they'll be back again with their hand out. I, I get the idea that we have people who are struggling in our society. I get the idea that the poor will be among us always. I understand the reading of the scripture and what it means for us to be people who give to the poor um, and that we're supposed to be people who do that readily. I think one of the things that, that to me makes sense about this is, is how we're in community with these folks and knowing the needs of people that are kind of around us that find themselves in struggling circumstances, right? Versus the people that are the anonymous ones that just kind of bang on our door, Um and, and come repetitively seeking, you know, some kind of handout from us. Uh, I, I want to make sure that uh, we do the best with your resources that we possibly can. Now, this is my parameter, though, on this. This is the way I, uh, I operate, and this is the way I prefer to operate. You may be totally different. You may be perfectly fine with engaging someone that's a complete stranger and doing for them something that you feel you are capable of doing in the moment. I've done that before. I've had people approach me on the streets and things like that. Um, and I have given people change out of my car, among other things. Um, I would encourage you to just simply follow, I think, the leading of the Spirit in that moment that each one of us will know when God is prompting us kind of deep down in our gut area, that this is a true moment where someone is literally in need. They're not looking for a handout to abuse it in some way, but they're looking for it because they have a particular need that maybe in that moment you can meet. 
And so what I want us to do is rather than maybe thinking of this in black and white kinds of terms, is really think about this in more of a spiritual realm of when God leads and speaks, am I listening enough and willing enough to be God's hands and feet? Right? Uh, you think about the Colossian scripture that says, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it in a manner that reflects Jesus Christ to the world. And I think that's what we want to do. We want to try to figure out how to be people who are God's loving and giving presence in this world, particularly in the instances where we know that through our, our community and our engagement with folks around us, uh, we know what transpires in their lives. I think that's one of the beauties of the Baby Grace community. That's one of the beauties of Neighbor to Neighbor. It's one of the beauties of our Backsnacks program, among many other things. Where we're interacting with agencies that have people that are, are definitely um, have a particular need and we have a, uh, the way in which we can engage that need and meet it. And through that, show God's love to others. But those are black and white kinds of things. And there's going to be some gray moments for you that are going to approach. And I want you to just simply be comfortable with saying, God, is this a moment where you are inviting me to show love to someone else and how you can do that and would you be willing to do it? So I think part of this for me is, is um, I need to be better at, and maybe for you, but need to be better at just simply listening, uh, sensing what God is saying within me. It's kind of a gut feeling for me. It might be for you. I think that's where God speaks is down here deep in the gut, not necessarily up here in the rational mind. But God moves us, um, and God tells us that this is the right opportunity, the right time to show love. And so may God make each one of us his servants. May God use us in ways that will be meaningful uh, to, to various people that we might engage. And may God give us the ears to listen so that we'll know when those moments arise and we can show his love to the world. Let's take a moment to pause and pray. So, dear Lord, help us to be your hands and feet to the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. Well, thank you so much for being here today. A pleasure to be with you. I'm so glad that you have joined for our devotion time today. Hi, Susan. Glad you made it as well. So, Allie's going to be our host for the rest of this week. Margaret and I are leaving tomorrow for a few days of vacation, we are going to a first birthday party for Miss Amelia in Miami. And so Allie's going to cover our devotion time while we are down there. I appreciate the fact that she's willing to do that. She's a great partner in ministry. I hope you appreciate uh, all that she gives, especially in this time as well. Uh, afterwards, um, it, when we finish, if you guys want to take a moment to uh, repost this on your own Facebook page. I'd appreciate you doing that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the rest of this beautiful Tuesday. God's rich grace and peace be upon you. And I will look forward to rejoining you next week for our devotion time. Thanks, friends.